Goodbye Entertainment. Everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to my DVD video game update. Now, as you guys have seen for the intro, I just showed you like little clips of the inside of Entertain Mart. Now, Entertain Mart, you know, it's actually going out of business. Um, it's actually moving. Um, to another area in my town except it's just gonna be called media exchange and it's more farther that means I'm gonna have to probably go to GameStop for video games now which isn't too bad but I mean entertain mart to me has better prices than GameStop does so without further ado you guys let's get started on this this is a big one so you might want to go grab something to eat grab something to drink because yeah this should be fun. Okay, you guys. So, the first movie I actually got is a movie I loved watching as a child. And I actually still enjoy watching this movie as I'm older. It's a very nostalgic movie to me. I just can't help but laugh my ass off with it. It is Kangaroo Jack. Which, for the original price, is $4.49. But look, for the sale price, it's $250. Only $250 for the DVD. I actually do have the VHS. I'm too lazy to look through my VHS collection to show you. But yeah, I own the movie on VHS, but I've been wanting to rewatch it for a while. So yes, here is the DVD for Kangaroo Jack. I really enjoy this movie, guys. I personally think it's a funny movie. I think. Anthony Anderson and Jerry O'Connell do a very great job with this movie. I especially love that scene where he puts on that jacket, wears those glasses, and Anthony Anderson and Jerry O'Connell are just taking those pictures with the kangaroo. It's a ridiculous movie. I understand that. I can see why someone may not like this movie, but honestly, I find a lot of enjoyment out of it. You know, even to this day as I'm old, I actually really enjoy this movie. Next one I got is... The Forbidden Kingdom. I really enjoyed The Forbidden Kingdom. I think it's a really good martial arts action flick with Jackie Chan and Jet Li collaborating. I'm into martial arts movies. To be honest you guys, I just think they're a lot of fun. That's what this movie is. It's just a lot of fun. Jackie Chan, you know, he's normally the Jackie Chan that we know and love. He kicks ass, but he's also very funny, too. And it was for $3.99. Alright, the next movie. Independence Day. Now, I actually did a collab review with Justin Watch's movies for Independence Day to celebrate the 4th of July earlier in 2015 this year. So, if you guys actually want to check out that review, it's up on my channel now. 250, I love this movie. I think it's so awesome. It's one of the cheesiest movies I've ever seen, but I love every minute of this movie. This is a definition on how to be cheesy but be so gosh darn entertaining at the same time. Will Smith is really great here. Um, Jeff Goldblum really great here. Everyone does a really great job here. Bill Pullman. Um, you know for the roles they are given they did a just an awesome job. This movie knows exactly what it wants to be and Sometimes with disaster movies, maybe they do know what they want to be, but they try maybe too hard to be something bigger. The writing to the movie is great. I really love the storyline. Special effects, cheesy as hell, but they're not the best special effects, you know, that's the one thing I'll say. But it kind of works for a movie like this, in all honesty. This is the definition of a movie to watch that just screams, Go America! And I think I forgot to mention this in my review, but this movie does have one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard in a movie 
ever. This movie is just so awesome. It's just so entertaining. So glad I bought this movie. The original price was $4.49, but on sale it's $2.50. So for this being $2.50, not a bad deal at all. Next movie is... Dun -dun 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 -dun. Vista, baby. That's right, the Terminator. I do own Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I forgot which DVD update it was, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I showed you guys Terminator 2 Judgment Day when I bought that in one of the updates. So I've owned that for a while. I now finally own the first movie. So pretty much um, until Terminator Genesis comes out, the Terminator and Terminator 2 are the only Terminator movies I need to own because... Three sucked ass. Four was forgettable. Definitely was. But the Terminator, I think, is really awesome. I think it's outstanding. I do think Terminator 2 is better. But even for the original, this is what started the franchise. This is what pretty much got Arnold Schwarzenegger into being this iconic role. The role that Arnold Schwarzenegger always pulls off so well. Linda Hamilton and the one who plays Kyle Reese, I believe it's Michael Bain, B-I-E-H-N. They both do really good together in this movie. The movie has this cool horror suspense to it. You could kind of say it's like Alien where it's like the original is like some kind of horror suspense but then the sequels are like this big action movie. It really was suspenseful because there's times where you think okay is the movie over and nope it just keeps going but it doesn't do it to the point where it just drags. It just does it enough to really satisfy you and get you gripped. And that's exactly what the Terminator did. It's outstanding. I rate it three and a half out of four stars. Uh, for those that are wondering what I would rate this movie. Yeah, three and a half out of four stars. It's a great movie. And it was $4 on sale price. The next movie is actually one of my favorite movies of 2014. That movie is Boyhood which I got for $8 when the original price is $12.99. I don't just love Boyhood because it took 12 years to make. I know people that don't like this movie are gonna say, oh, people are just saying this because it took 12 years to make. Um, in my defense, even if Boyhood did not take 12 years to make, I would still love this movie, honestly. Boyhood is just such a special movie, in my opinion. It just has some of the most original storytelling. I've seen this decade, to be honest. Like, it's so original. It's so refreshing. Yes, it's simple. It's basic. And I can see why Boyhood may not be for everyone. I know there's criticisms how it drags on, how it's too boring, how it has plot holes. I think the plot holes in this movie are kind of relating to reality because think about it. In our lives, one way or another, we're going to run into the people that stay through our lives for pretty much the whole entire time. But then there's going to be those people that you see and you never see again. Boyhood presented that so well. You're going to have those that come and go. And you're going to have those that just stick with you for the rest of your life. And it just feels so real and so genuine. The performances are fantastic in this movie. And I know Mason was a character that was hard to relate to some people. Personally, I could relate to Mason because I'll be honest, in my years of being a teenager and before I graduated high school, I actually had those doubts. Mason had the movie. I was actually questioning life. I was like, why am I here on earth? What's my purpose to be on earth? Like, what's the point of me being here? Like, I literally had the questions Mason had in this movie. So that's why maybe... I also re really love the movie because I did relate 
to the main character. It's just so cool to see these characters grow up. The funny thing is that when this movie opens, it opens with this shot. Like the cover is the opening shot of Boyhood, which I find impressive. It's beautifully shot. Like I said, the performances are fantastic and they feel like they're real people. That's what makes this movie so great. That's what makes this movie just absolutely fantastic and just so memorable because I got behind these characters and Ethan Hawke is easily one of the best parts about Boyhood. I just loved him as the father and Richard Linklater just does such a great job for directing this. I give the filmmakers behind this a lot of credit because to keep this pretty much a secret for all of these years, for all of these actors having to meet up with each other like I think once every year during the summertime to film this movie and then you have to make sure you save these footages to edit together to complete the movie. So when I think about that, that's just like, wow. Plus Richard Linklater makes other movies while he's making this. So yeah, but like I said, it's not just because of the 12 years I love this movie. It's honestly just because of the storytelling and the characters and just how relatable it is to me. But Boyhood for me, worth the $8. The next film is actually one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. I did review this as part of my There's Nothing Like Holly Jolly Christmas Reviews and that is Bad Santa. Another movie I actually collaborated with Justin Watches Movies so if you guys actually want to see my review for Bad Santa it is up on my channel if you want to check it out just to get a little bit more details on my own thoughts with this movie but I'll still give you my thoughts anyways. Not only is Bad Santa one of the best Christmas movies I've ever seen, but personally it is one of the best comedy movies I've seen, period. Yes, it's raunchy, but it's more raunchy through the dialogue. And I like it better when you could just push the R rating to the next level, not by what's thrown in your face, but what the characters say says out of their mouths. That's what makes this movie so fucking funny. Seriously, you guys, this movie is so funny. I actually cried with laughter. It's not often a comedy makes me laugh so hard I actually have tears coming out of me. I really did love this movie. It's by far one of the best performances from Billy Bob Thornton, um, Bernie Mac, you know, rest in peace to the man. He was a very good actor. He was fantastic here. Tony Cox was great. Um, the kid was great. And Lauren Graham, um, yeah, she was really great in this movie too. I think everyone, for the roles that they had, they really used them to their advantage. And the thing I love about this movie too is that there's actually heart. And it's not like forced heart, like with some R-rated movies, you know, there's some R-rated movies that try to have heart or be, or even just be serious for the sake of it and it feels forced. With this movie, when it's funny, it is so fucking funny. But when it's heartwarming, it's honestly very heartwarming and it's really touching. And Billy Bob Thornton, who is so despicable, he is, a bad Santa. The title suits Billy Bob Thornton. He is a very despicable character, but slowly through this movie, you could see this kid actually changing him a bit. The next one is the movie Brothers. I got this for, oh, it only lowered down by a dollar, surprisingly. The original price was $4.99, but now it's $4. And it is with Tobey Maguire, Jake Gyllenhaal, and one of the most beautiful actresses and most talented actresses working today, Natalie Portman. Now, Brothers is a really intense war film. It's directed by Jim Sheridan. Jim Sheridan, I hope I pronounced that right. This is one of the most intense war movies I've honestly seen. I really don't want to get too much into it, but... Tobey Maguire, really crazy in this movie. One of the 
best performances he's ever given in his career, to be honest. The way he reacts is just unbelievable because you know when you're out in the war you're gonna see things that just traumatize you and there's things that go inside his mind that he just goes crazy but he shouldn't be the only one credited here Jake Gyllenhaal way way before prisoners Jake Gyllenhaal has shown what he has as an actor and he does show it here in this movie Natalie Portman really awesome in this movie too they're just so believable it really is a powerful and gripping movie. I'm shaking. I'm at the edge of my seat. And it's really heartbreaking too. I'm definitely glad I bought this movie. It was only $4. It's a great war movie with great performances. The next movie is one of the best movies I've ever seen. It is directed by the one and only really Scott, Alien. Holy shit. Just holy shit. It's one of the best movies ever made. It's one of the, dare I say it, best horror suspense movies I've ever seen. This movie is so well directed. It looks so beautiful. And for this being a movie from 1979, the visuals look fucking phenomenal. This movie blew my mind. And the thing is that, yes, this is a slow moving film. It does go at a slow pace. And I could see why maybe some people could get maybe kind of bored watching this movie. Honestly, for this being a movie that moved at a slow pace, there is not a single second, not a single scene where I was bored. Because from start to finish, Alien gripped my fucking mind and took me into this world. So Gurney Weaver, John Hurt, Ian Holm, all the other actors look really great. Great sound effects. Cinematography is great. Honestly, what Ridley Scott did to this movie was just incredible. And he should be credited so much for this movie because of how just amazing the overall filmmaking is. So, Alien, indeed, was worth buying for four bucks. Love this movie so much. One of my favorite movies of all time. And just in general, one of the best movies ever made. Now, the next film is... Well, a Nicolas Cage movie, and I only have four words to say. Put the bunny down. Con Air, starring John Cusack, Nicolas Cage, John Malkovich, two Johns. And this film, man, it's just so much fun. I remember when my mom told me about this movie, uh, I think it was like five or six years ago, she told me how much she enjoyed the movie. I had no idea what this movie was at that time. But all I can say is thank you so much to my mom because this movie is a lot of fun. It's cheesy, awesome, fun. The action's a lot of fun here. The lines are very cheesy. You have other great actors here like with Ving Rhames, yeah. And you have Steve Buscemi. You have... Danny Trejo in this movie. You have a lot of great actors here. Just making such a cheesy, fun movie. Look, even Siskel and Ebert, you know, rest in peace to both of them. But look, there's their cover where they say, not cover, wording where they say, high energy fun. I have to agree with Siskel and Ebert because Conair really is high energy fun. It knows exactly what it wants to be. It doesn't take itself too seriously. I just had to get this film. It was only like $5. So, there you go. And speaking of cheesy awesome fun... Machete. Oh, and yeah, speaking of Jan Danny Trejo, look at that. Another cheesy movie. Danny Trejo, Jessica Alba. Michelle Rodriguez in her sexy black bra. Oh yeah. And you got, hey, I'm Robert De Niro. 
Yeah. I'm in Machete. Okay, yeah, not a good impression. I get it. But my point being, Cheech Marine in this too. Love Cheech Marine. Machete, just like with pretty much what I said about Conair, knows exactly what it is. It is bloody, it's awesome, and it's a lot of fun. Um, yes, can it take itself maybe a little too seriously in spots here and there? Yeah, sure. But I would say that pretty much for the most part, it pretty much knows exactly what it is. Danny Trejo. Honestly, I think he was born to play this role. Still has the cheesiness of Spy Kids, but just amp up with all the violence. So everyone does a really good job here. I really like Jessica Alba, Robert De Niro, Michelle Rodriguez, Cheech Marine here as the priest. You could tell they were having a lot of fun with their roles. Wow, damn. I only had to pay one fifty for this movie. Only one fifty. The original is two forty nine, so it's like either way I still would have bought it for a cheap price. But yeah, damn entertain mark. Uh, and you have to go out of business when you have great prices like that. Now, the next movie I got is A Few Good Men. This movie is fantastic. You have Tom Cruise in this movie, you have you have Jack Nicholson here. You have Demi Moore, Kevin Bacon, the list goes on. Just a lot of great talents in this movie. It's a very great courtroom movie that keeps me interested and honestly has me at the edge of my seat. Of course, it is directed by Rob Reiner, one of the best directors to be working in Hollywood. He does such a great job directing this film. Cinematography looks absolutely beautiful. It's incredible filmmaking. The performances were all so strong, so believable, so memorable. It's one of the best performances, hands down by Tom Cruise, one of the best performances from Jack Nicholson. It's a movie that just kept me so invested from start to finish. It was just so engaging to watch and that's why when I saw that Entertainment had this for $4.49. I had to buy this movie. If you're into courtroom movies, I highly recommend A Few Good Men, especially for the tremendous performances from all of these actors right here. Dun 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 dun! Robocop, oh uh, sorry, Robocop the original and Robocop the remake. Okay, so let's start off with the original. The original is a classic. It's awesome. It's easily one of the best 80s action movies I've ever seen and not only is this movie just so great because of the action and how violent it is. It's a very violent movie. It's one of the most violent movies I've seen to be honest but it does a great job of giving this character a backstory. He's not just the robot that goes around and handcuffs people. You know there's more to this character. I'm not going to give away what it is, but when you hear about his backstory, it actually makes you feel bad for the guy. And you want to root for him. You want him to go out and um, defeat Red from that 70s show. Yeah, that's right. Red from that 70s show is the villain in this movie. And it's just so fucking awesome. Definitely one of the best action movies I've ever seen. One of the best movies from the 80s. It's an absolute action classic. Very well acted. Great effects for its time. And it's very well shot. It has beautiful cinematography to it. And it was only for $2.50. $2.50 for a classic movie. So that's the original Robocop. And now... Robocop, the 2014 remake. Now, I actually liked this movie. I thought it was really well done. Of course, um, nowhere near the level of the original. I wouldn't expect a remake to be as good as the original. I just expect, when I go into remakes, honestly, if it's trying to remake an original, just at least be a good remake. I'd rather see a good remake over a pretty meh remake or even a blah remake. This one's actually under the good remake category for me. I think what honestly makes this a good remake is the is the fact that it actually 
try to do something different. It didn't try to rehash the original. It didn't try to disrespect the original in any way. In fact, this respected the original, but it made it its own thing at the same time. First of all, they do play the theme song from the original Ro Robocop. They do actually play the theme here, like, at least a couple of times, and it's just so great, as well as saying like a few lines from the original. Joel Kinnaman as Alex Murphy, he was really good here. I actually thought he gave a really good performance here. And Ronald Nye, he was average for some reason. I don't know if it was like the script or how he acted with that movie, but here, I actually thought he acted better here. There was just something about his acting, but he did do a good job. He did do a good job here. Yeah, he presented the character well. He made the character his own thing. The action sequences are actually a lot of fun to watch into this movie. Not as violent as the original because it's PG-13, but I would even say for a PG-13 movie, this movie could get quite violent. Samuel Jackson, you know, his role may not be huge, but he definitely makes the most out of it, especially without spoiling anything, if you haven't seen this movie, the ending. What happens at the ending was hysterical. I like that they had a family storyline going for this movie. I thought that was actually pretty interesting how the movie does that. It kind of, like I said, it does give a nice new spin to the character of Robocop. It's shot nicely. I actually think it is a very well directed movie and yeah it just at least tries to do something different which I respect the movie for and of course Michael Keaton who pretty much comes back to films with this movie. Yeah Birdman was like his oh he's back to being great but it's like Although maybe not a huge role for him, he did pretty much come back to movies with this film in which that made me so happy because he was really good here. Jay Baruchel, Bir excuse me, uh, he was really good here. This was a good remake. I'm happy with it. So yeah, Robocop 2014 for five dollars okay you guys so the first video game i bought is family guy back to the multiverse multiverse yeah i've never played this game before so when i saw this i had to buy it because you know i really enjoy family guy yes even the newer seasons i still really enjoy family guy I got the game for $10. I played some of this game as I'm filming this update, and so far I'm actually really enjoying this video game. I really like the animation graphics for the PS3 because, you know, it's obvious PS3 video game graphics, but it fits with the world of Family Guy. The animation to this game does fit the personalities of the characters from the show, which it should be. You know, just from looking at the backside, um, I could tell I'm going to have more fun with this game as it goes on. Obviously, it's rated M for blood, mature humor, sexual themes, use of drugs, violence. <sighs> Everything you could wish for in Family Guy. <laughs> the next one I got is a game that my good buddy, Brian Mendoza, shout out to him, recommended to me. And that is Uncharted. Three. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't played any of the Uncharted games. In fact, Uncharted 3 is going to be the first game I played. Played a little bit of this game too, and so far, I really like it. The graphics are fantastic. This being a PS3 video game, it does look so great. It gives a lot of details to the characters. I wanted to play at least one of the Uncharted games to kind of get familiar with it because people do bring up the Uncharted games a lot. Um, I know there's an Uncharted 4 coming out. So um, I guess if there's one way for me to start with this franchise, it'd be with Uncharted 3. I got this for $4.49, really good price, and I look forward to playing the rest of this game. The next one is Mercenaries World in flames. I actually have played this game when 
my brother and I used to have the PS2. We would play this game a lot together. It was so much fun. When I saw that Entertain Mart had it, especially for a good price, like $5. Don't know if you guys could see it. There you go. But I just remember having a lot of fun with this game, and I've been wanting to revisit it. Graphics look really great. Really like the details into the game. Action's a lot of fun. This game as a whole, I just remember being a lot of fun from the PS2. If I had so much fun playing it on the PS2, I'm pretty sure it'll be the same for the PS3 right here. So, $5, Mercenaries, World, and Flames. Um, I think that's the full title. The price is kind of covering the rest. But, yeah. Alright. The next one I got, because I've heard so many great things about this, and it is the first two God of War games. I gotta get the third God of War soon, um, but I want to at least start off slowly with these in the meantime, because I hear so many good things about the God of War games. I know my good buddy, WWE fan 0599, shout out to you buddy. He told me the second one especially was really awesome, so I haven't gotten to play these games yet as once again as I'm filming this update. I've seen the graphics, I've even watched some of the gameplay for these games, so I pretty much am aware of what these games are all about. Just by looking at the backside already has me pumped to start playing these games. I can't wait to get introduced to the world of God of War. So that is it, the God of War collection for five dollars on sale. The next game I bought is Motor Storm. I pretty much know nothing about this game. I have never even heard of this game. It's actually honestly one of those situations where I basically judged the game by this cover and so I just bought it and it was for eight dollars. Yeah eight dollars for this game. It looks like a lot of fun. On the back side it has survive the off-road. I am looking forward to playing it though because like I said just by judging the cover it looks pretty kick-ass so motor storm um yeah it looks pretty awesome and speaking of some racing the next one I got is MX versus ATX Untamed another game I have no pretty much no idea what it is well it has what's it called the dirt bikes and all that and I played some dirt bike games growing up so that's why I actually bought this because I am kind of a sucker for dirt bike video games so while I haven't played this game yet it looks like a game I'll have fun playing so that's all I have to really say about it it was ten dollars on sale so yeah this game looks really awesome the next game was a game I used to have for the Xbox 360 and that game is Tron Evolution. Um, Tron Evolution, I do remember having fun with this game. It has been, say like what, four, five years since I played this game? It was $9 when the original price is $11.99. And basically for what I could tell you from this game because I do remember the game. I remember the graphics being really good and colorful. It sticks with what pretty much Tron Legacy the movie was in which I love Tron Legacy. That's one of my favorite movies of 2010. Oh okay okay. Experience the prequel story to Tron Legacy. So it's the prequel to the actual movie. Okay. I actually forgot about that. I love being transported into the Tron world. I really like the graphics. I look forward to playing this game again because, like I said, I used to play it for the Xbox 360. It was cool when I played it. And yeah, next game is The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. It was $13. I've really enjoyed playing these Spider-Man games. You know, I played a Spider-Man video game when I used to have the PS1. I remember playing Spider-Man 2 when I had the PS2. Um, and then, you know, the PS3, I'm playing Spider-Man 3, the video game, and I had a lot of fun playing with that game personally, so I figured why not go ahead and buy the Amazing Spider-Man video game. And it was actually good too, because look, the original price is like 
$22.99, but the price dropped to $13. So, yeah, I have to take advantage of things like that, right? I heard it's a really good video game, WWE Fan 0599. He told me that this was a really good video game. Um, so I look forward to playing this game. I really like the Spider-Man video games I played throughout my life. It's like I'm a sucker of swinging on webs and just fighting crime and just fighting all these villains. It should be exciting. So, yeah, The Amazing Spider-Man, the video game. The next one is Call of Duty Black Ops. And, um... I guess there's no sale price on this one, so I'm just going to assume it was $12.99. But Call of Duty Black Ops, I played this game countless times. I played it when, whenever I would go over to my friend's house to play the Xbox. Say for example, if my friends come over to my house uh, to play this game with me, you know, I'll just pop in this game. Maybe here and there if I'm kind of bored and feel like just shooting shit, I'll pop in this game. But I say for the most part, I play this game mainly when it comes to multiplayer. So, I bought this game so I could have more multiplayer games to play whenever I have guests over. You know, whenever I am playing with guests, it is a lot of fun. By itself, not as much, but with guests, it is. The next one I got is a, some game called Dirt. It's a racing game. I've heard of this game. I think I remember hearing about this game. This was $8 on a sell price, and I do like racing games. The graphics, just judging from the backside, it does look really cool. Honestly, that's all I have to say. It looks like it's a fun racing game. I'm glad I bought it. Still haven't played it yet, but I can tell it's a game I'll have some fun playing. Now, the next game is actually a recommendation from my friend, Seb Carrasco, one of the founders of the Universe of the Blue Tubers channel, which I'm very happy to be a part of, Dishonored. It's Dishonored, the first game. I remember Seb Carrasco, one of my good friends, recommended me this game, as well as like the sequels to Dishonored. I've never played the game, so I figured, why not get started for the first one? Also because it was $2, so why not take advantage of it, right? The graphics look really good. Looks like there's a lot of details from what I'm looking in the backside to Dishonored. So I do look forward to seeing, not seeing, I look forward to playing Dishonored whenever I could get to it. Now the next video game I bought is Disney Infinity. I've seen a lot of commercials for this video game. Only $7. Surprisingly, the back doesn't even show you footages of the game. It just shows you, like, the characters. So not even the back side kind of gives me a little bit of insight of what the game is about. Like, what the overall plot is. But I do like playing these Disney characters. Like, as you can see, there's Mr. Incredible in the front. There's Captain Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. They're solely, like I said, I'm a sucker for adventure games. So I look forward to playing this game knowing that it's actually an adventure game. My kind of video games, personally. I don't have too much to say about this because I really don't know what it's all about. I'm not sure how the graphics will be. I'm sure they'll be pretty good, though. It's a PS3 video game. Kind of a blind buy. Pretty much don't know what's going to be, but I'm pretty sure I'll have fun with it. And now, just like with my movies, I am going to end this with the final two. Because these final two are part of a popular video game franchise. And that is Batman Arkham Origins and Batman Arkham Asylum. I unfortunately could not get... Batman City because when I saw it it was cracked and when I looked into the disc it was all scratched up so unfortunately I couldn't buy that but I did get Origins I did get Asylum now I played bits and pieces of both of these games you know from when my friends had them whenever I would go over to my friend's house we would play some of these games together but now that I own them, I could actually play the full games and just get into this universe more because I do love Batman. I have been wanting to play these games fully because when I played bits and pieces of them, I was just so invested into the overall world, the story, and 
where the games take Batman here. It's just so awesome. Origins was $11 on sale. And then Asylum was $9.99. If you're still watching this update, seriously, thank you guys so much. I'm pretty sure it's a long update. I'm pretty sure it's going to take me a while to edit this entire update. But you know what? This was a lot of fun, you guys. So like I said, if you're still watching, thanks for taking the time to watch this, you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the movies, all of the video games that I bought. And as for Entertain Mart, I'm really sad to see that store go because that store just had so many great prices for video games and movies. Like some of the cheapest, but best prices you can see. It's just such a shame to just see it go out of business. But you know what? I'm glad I got to go there one last time. Take advantage for the movies and the games that they had. Thank you Entertain Mart for being a great store. You will be missed, but never forgotten. All the movies you saw in this update, comment below your thoughts on them. And then all of the video games I just showed in this update, Comment below your thoughts on them. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.